librarians and friends uh, that could not make the Brodart librarian get together in Pennsylvania. I'm recording this video to show the same um, books I'm going to be presenting that day. I'm going to go off video so that I can share my screen and uh, show you some of the interiors of the books I'll be talking about that day. So hang in there with me. I'm going to share my screen and it's going to be a collection of picture books, middle grade, uh, ready to reads and board books and a couple young adults coming out this fall. Starting with Problem Solved by Jan Thomas comes out August 29th, Beach Lane Books. Um, Jan Thomas is popular with librarians and and this book revolves around um, Pete the Porcupine attempting to help Rabbit clean up um, his room and creating quite the calamity. As Jan Thomas does with her other titles, she mixes vivid illustrations with quirky humor, and it is a perfect read aloud for library story time. Just here's some of the interiors from Jan Thomas, Problem Solved. You can see the Porcupine hears there's a problem with the messy room. And in, in attempting to help Rabbit, makes, <laughs> makes a mess. So you can see in, in the process of helping Rabbit or trying to help Rabbit, Rabbit is cleaning up behind Porcupine and in the process cleans the room, gets rid of Porcupine, problem solved. Next up is 365, How to Count a Year from Beach Lane Books, um, author Miranda Paul, great illustrations by Julian Chung. Um, book comes out on September 26th. And this uh, book is a very sneaky way to provide kids with ways to count a year, whether it be days, minutes, hours, and more. Um, it includes, includes a great back matter section which I'm not going to be able to show you today, but you can see from these interiors that um, there's 365 days for the world to spin around the sun, 365 good mornings and good nights, and hopefully 365 clean pairs of underwear. So it's got vivid, colorful illustrations, fun um, animals throughout, and kids will love ways, different ways of counting a year, including 565, 300 minutes. Um, there's always room for one more. Um, Robin McGrath comes out 829. Next picture book is about Claire and her family um, and how a new table brings back emotional memories for Claire of all the things that happen around the old table. It's a great uh read aloud picture book for uh, social emotional learning. Um, you can see um, from the illustrations and the story within, uh, the family's going out to get a new table. They um, pack up the new table and bring it to the house. Everybody in the neighborhood is going to help um, paint and get the new table ready to put in the house. And then um, as the old table is being moved out, Claire gets upset that all the memories that were created around the old table will be lost and is um, at the end of the story is told by the family that it's not the table that met, makes the memories, it's the family that makes the memories and, um, and um, wonderful social emotional learning. Next up is Elves Are the Worst, comes out September 12th from Simon Schuster Books for Young Readers. It's the fourth in the series full of color and bling from Alex Woolen. It brings back popular character Gilbert the Goblin, who has already had run-ins with unicorns, dragons, and yetis. And in this installment, Gilbert is out to prove he is a better worker than any other elf. Kids will laugh out loud as Gilbert snap, crackles, and pops his virtues in a picture book that's going to be great for holiday reading at the library this season. You can see it's colorful. There's some of the other titles. And there's Gilbert, the popular goblin, who always has a way of trying to prove he's better than others and ends up in the process of finding out that 
Perhaps, maybe he's not. Next up is Welcome Home, Amy Bates. Um, comes out 919 from Paula Wiseman. Um, author, illustrator, Amy Bates was the creator of the uh, best-selling book, The Big Umbrella. And in this picture book, she provides another stunning collection of watercolors, uh, watercolor illustrations, and a story that evokes, much like The Big Umbrella, the joys of being together and inclusive. More and more pets are added in this story, uh, and as it moves along, it becomes a very cozy house with all these pets being added in. It's adorable, wonderful illustrations. I love Amy Bates. Next up is uh, Lita Judge. Don't worry, Waddles. Um, comes out September 26th from Athenaeum. And ever since Red Sled, I've all I really enjoyed the books authored and illustrated by Lita Judge. And in this story, Duckling becomes a little bit protective of the other animals on the farm and keeps taking wool off of the sheep. Uh, you can see from the spreads here that um, Duckling's trying to keep the rooster worm, trying to keep the um, rabbit worm and other animals on the farm and in the process the sheep keeps losing his wool <laughs> it's very funny i'll uh, lead a judge next up is a non-fiction picture book um a stone is a story leslie bernard booth comes out 10 3 um illustrated by mark mark martin this non-fiction fiction picture book takes uh follows a single rock through the years. It's got extensive back matter at the end that looks at the rock cycle. It's informative glossary it is amazing. Um, so you might want to consider this for library um, events revolving around science or rock painting or maybe even volcano making. Depends. But you can see from um, the pictures, it goes back to the life of the stone from the volcano era on forward. And um, you can take a look at some of these illustrations more um, than I'm doing. I have to go through here quickly to try and get through all the picture books and other books I want to show you today. Just wonderful illustrations, though, in this one. A stone is a story. Next, what, next up is librarian favorite Allison McGee. Um, comes out on September uh, October 10th, pardon me. And um, she teams with Sean Qual as the illustrator for this enduring story of father-son bonding. It's got rhyming text, lively art, and I believe it will be great for story time reading with fathers and their kiddos. There's Baby B, high five, down low. You ready? Let's go. Give me that tie and I'll show you a bow. Give me your foot. I'll give you my toe. I don't need to read it all to you, but you can see it's lovely illustrations. Lively and lovely. Winter, a solstice story. Um, comes out October 10th. Paula Wiseman, author Kelsey Gross, team's illustrator, Renita Luaska for a story set in a forest during solstice. The artist rendering of an owl, a mouse, and a deer, and other creatures in the snow is exceptional and mixes with a magical prose for my favorite picture book of the fall season coming out October 10th. I'm going to show you some of these spreads and you're going to see why I just love, uh, love, love, love this book. Great illustrations of the animals, the setting. You can almost feel yourself out in that cold snow. Winter, a solstice story. Next up is Water Day. Margarita Engel, nonfiction picture book, um, tells us the true story of the importance of water being brought to the rural village. Um, this is based upon Margarita's, uh, you know, being part of the village in um, Trinidad, where water was bought once a week 
to provide for the families in each of the rural villages. This book comes out 822, um, and it talks about the importance of water and gives a nod towards the importance of conservation of water and keeping water clean and um, what they use water for in the rural villages, bathing, cleaning, cooking, um, and really talks about the importance of uh, the community and uh, water to that community. Um, water Day um, will really touch on any um, kind of lessons that you you want to give regarding the importance of conservation. Next up is Loud and Proud. It's the story of Shirley Chisholm, not a fiction fiction book by Lisa, Lisa Klein Ransom. Um, comes out 919, just in time for election day. Um, Shirley Chisholm was an important figure in history. She's the first African-American woman to want, run for president. She's a civil rights advocate. She's a groundbreaking politician. It's an inspirational story that lets kids know that it's important for their voices to be heard, just like Shirley. Um, so good picture book, tells a good lesson, um, tells history of the um, some of the struggles of African-Americans and uh, also the importance of the NAACP and Shirley's role in that. It's um, a book about importance of getting out to vote and letting your voice be heard. Be great in California and other states around the country. Next up is another um, important nonfiction picture book called The Snowman. Johan Winter um, resides in Pittsburgh, so local Pennsylvania author. His mother, Jeanette Winter, is the illustrator of this book. Um, and they, they two team up to tell about Billy Barr, um, a recluse who for years um, kept diaries in Colorado of what was happening with the snowfall and the less and less snowfall. This um, book tells about an important um, uh Contribution to Climate Change Data. His observations starting in the 1970s and through today show a decrease in snowfall that's important to climate change research. And also the illustrations really capture um, him being alone outside, but with the animals that um, stood by his side and in his cabin um, and kept him company. Importance of keeping journal activities and um, why that's important in climate change today. So wonderful story by the winters. Next up is There is a Party for Langston by Jason Reynolds. Um, our first picture book from Jason comes out 10-3. It's from Athenaeum. And um, here he teams with the Pumphreys, uh, Jerome and Jarrett, to give a foot-stopping ode to the wordplay and importance of poet Langston Hughes. There was a tribute party for Langston Hughes at the Harlem Public Library. This, port, this book points to the importance of librarians in community building and also in librarians handing the books that Langston Hughes uh, wrote to their patrons. Um, so this book tells about that um, party at the library held February 1991. It tells about Langston Hughes and his importance um, in the literary community and um, talks about how the party was such a success in bringing Langston Hughes um, out to the community. It's a foot stopping picture book, nonfiction. Next up is our first board book, Snow, Snow, Snow. Um, it tells a story, um, A um, we now have most, if not all, of the board books that Sandra Boynton wrote, we got a lot of them from Workman, and we're doing a lot of new ones at Simon & Schuster. She's got her own print imprint called Boynton Bookworks, and in this book, Snow, 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 coming out 912, um, just do yourself a favor when you leave today's presentation, look up Snow, Snow, Snow. Sandra Boynton um uh, created this video song which goes along with this book is absolutely fantastic 
you'll be happy you pulled down the song and you'll be singing along all the way home. Christmas time, snow, snow, snow. Sandra Boyton, just wonderful illustrations. Nobody captures um, animals and fun like Sandra Boyton. Just great stuff. Snow, snow, snow. Uh, next up is one by Ruth Foreman. Um, Ruth Foreman's really got um, a great collection of board books. Um, this is one that comes out 829, but you, we also have ours. We have Bloom and we have Glow. And uh, do yourself and pick one up and you'll see the interiors in these books just have great poetry uh, by Ruth Foreman in addition to these wonderful illustrations throughout each book. Um, and she teaches self-love, that each person has their own beauty, and just um, wonderful homey illustrations. Ruth Foreman, board book one, coming out 829. Next up, a few ready-to-reads. All of our ready-to-reads are available on hardcover and paperback. This is a pre-level one um, called Puppy Cam. It's part of our Animal Cam series. It's a book that shows what the world looks like from um, a different character's viewpoint. We also have Shark Cam and um, Kitty Cam. And these, these early readers have adorable illustrations with fun, informative text. Puppy Cam coming out, 829. Next up, we have Jonathan Fensky, Try a Bite, Try Low Bite. Fensky was the winner of the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award. And you can see from the illustrations, his, uh, um, his books definitely have a nod with the humor and uh, the look within to Dr. Seuss and some of the Dr. Seuss series books. Um, he's just very um, funny and does great with the wordplay. Kids will love these. Full color throughout, ready to read. Next up is Cat versus Back, another ready-to-read available in both hardcover and paperback. This rhyming ready-to-read um, humorously captures that infamous battle between the vacuum and the cat. And in this one, you can see some of the spreads that the dog's also scared of the vacuum as well. So fun book that kids will definitely be able to uh, relate to. Next up is Interrupting Cow and the Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. This is the fifth in the series uh, by really popular library author, Jane Yulin. Um, each of the books got humor, fun jokes, funny puns. Um, kids will keep turning the pages, full color throughout. Um, and Interrupting Cow, this one talks about how there's a strange uh, person in the pasture and it ends up being a wolf and sheep's clothing so fun Jane Yulin kids will love it next up is uh eagles in the end zone no not the Philadelphia Eagles this is the Eagles um by Heidi Stemple Heidi is the author of Jane uh I should say the the daughter of Jane Yulin so her books have really been picking up in popularity and this is a uh, rhyming ready to read um, that um, captures uh, all the mayhem that takes place when the Eagles play the Turkeys in a football game. You can see full color throughout, rhyming, easy words, great ready to read um, activity for the kids. There's the Eagles. Super gross up next. Super gross is. Um, this is a six book in the nonfiction series featuring all things gross. This one night creatures takes kid, kids into some of the gross night creatures like bats, night crawlers, lightning bugs, and so much more. Um, there's, there's been ones about smells. There's been ones about your body. Um, so there's a whole series of these ready to reads on gross items and kids just love everything gross very popular ready to read series hardcover and paperback available next up is flashback to the chill 2000s this is part of a three book series now we have the 80s the 90s and the 2000s i guess you could call these history i 
I don't want to call him history, but you can call him history. Um, this flashes back to some of the technology, some of the um, fun things that were taking place back in the 2000s. Maybe not so fun with Y2K, but you get the gist. Um, it's fun, ready to read, so the kids can uh, see what their parents or relatives were up to in the 2000s. Uh, first chapter book is Junior Monster Scouts. This really bridges between ready to reads and uh, full fledged chapter books. Um, Joe McGee um, from Frenchtown, New Jersey, so somewhat local author. Um, it's really popular with the kids. The chapter, the um, Monster Scouts series has been a lot of fun. It's got black and white illustrations throughout. Um, good wordplay. The kids keeps the kids turning the pages as the junior mouse monster scouts have badges uh, that your maybe your regular scouts don't want to get. But um, fun pages there. And next up is um, Jarrett Lerner, also popular with the kids. This is part of our quick series of fun fast reads. Another great. Um, chapter book series for bridging the gap between ready to reads and real chapter books. Giger has been popular. So is Jared Lerner also available um, paperback hardcover. And um, these, uh, this character Giger, the robot goes to the history museum and causes anxiety with other patrons at, at the museum. So much like our other chapter books, they're short chapters, they have black and white illustrations, and they're good uh, for bridging the, uh, between ready to reads and chapter books. And a little bit shorter chapter books are Heidi Heckelback and Henry the Heckelback. Um, both are fun, fast chapter book series, popular with the kids. Um, Heidi's been really great. We're up to like number 30 in the Heidi series and number 13 in the Henry series. Um, Fun, fast chapter books, black and white illustrations, Heidi and Hecky, uh, Heidi and Henry Heckelbeck, very popular. Next up is Ada Lace. Um, Ada Lace um, has been a popular series. It's been written. It's written by Emily Candle Candelaria. She's well known for being the sidekick of Bill Nye, the Science Guy. Um, her exploration series um at on netflix has been nominated for an emmy it's this series is very popular for building um stem as stem is used um to help kids navigate everyday issues and also solve mysteries uh this um new installment in the ada lace series um emily is it's very um uh Emily takes something to happen in her real life because she became very popular via social media and became anxious over that. And she takes that, what happened in her life and brings it to Ada's life and talks about some of the pearls of becoming famous via social media. So uh, this is really a personal story for Emily. Um, take a look out for it. Ada Lace comes out on 1010. Next up is a series called Isle of Adventure. This is the Critter Cafe. This comes out 926. Uh, this is the fifth book in the Isle of Adventure series. Yeah, it's a little nod to Dr. Doolittle and that Isla speaks to animals and they take her for adventures throughout the island, help her solve mysteries and navigate throughout the island and perform various tasks. It's got black and white illustrations, early chapter books, um, fun, fast reading. Look for that one, Isle of Adventure, featuring diverse characters. Uh, first middle grade book I want to talk about is Graphic Novel Stunt Boy in Between Time by Jason Reynolds. It's the second book in the Stunt Boy series. Got illustrations throughout. Stunt Boy is back to maybe save the universe, or if not, maybe clean his room. Um, no one captures uh, what's happening in urban cities better than Jason Reynolds. So in this um, second book in the Stunt Boy series, Stunt Boy is back and saving the world. Um, next up is just to let you know that some of this, uh, all of the books in the Ghost series are going to be translated into Spanish. So first up is Ghost. 
uh, first book in the track series coming out in Spanish on August 29th. Uh, and I couldn't get through a Simon & Schuster middle grade favorite authors mentioned without Stu Gibbs. It's a new book in the Spy series. Spy School series comes out 10-3. It's full of humor, suspense, action-packed, and most of his books are set in glamorous locations, although this one maybe not so much, but kids will still love it because it's got the humor that Stu Gibbs is well known for. Next up is what I will predict will be an award-winning book by Carol, Carol Boston Weatherford with art by her son, Jeffrey. Um, it's a collection of um, powerful poetry, uh, stories of her ancestors from Africa who were bought as slaves and other voices throughout her ancestry through the troubling times of slavery, through uh, some of the uh, segregation, civil rights, all of those things are brought to light in this very important, powerfully illustrated and wonderfully told collection of poems that, again, is so strong and um, affecting. I cannot see it not getting some kind of award. Next up is Vivian Van Tressel and the Secret of Midnight Lake by Michael Whitner. Comes out August 29th, middle grade fantasy. Um, Michael Whitner is very well known as the New York Times bestselling author of several Dungeons and Dragons um, tales. And in this story, he takes some of that world building into the middle grade realm and, uh, and what I think will be made into a series it's just got this ending which really translates to what will be a really great middle grade series for kids it's got action adventure great world building um and definitely is a nod to dungeons and dragons um at mysterious atmospheric midnight lake vivian van trussell next up for middle grade readers is dark diaries the 15th in the series each book has been a New York Times bestseller. Rachel Renee Russell really captures what kids are thinking about. Um, it's told in diary format, black and white illustrations throughout. I think a lot of kids um, will want to um, start with number one. Some of them are not familiar with Dork Diaries and will really love the um, Nikki character. Um, in the new book, Nikki goes to Paris and finds everything that's happening in Paris. Um, next up is a series that also is a nod to Heidi. It's told in diary format. It takes um, what I told you about Heidi Heckelback into middle grade. It tells Heidi's um, Heidi's diary what's happening in middle grade. It's got all the drama, the angst that happens in middle grade to kids with boys, with uh, taking part in clubs and all that uh, happens in middle grade um, to Heidi. Um, and it very much evokes the di Dork Diaries format, and that is told in journal format. Um, so it's got everything kids will be familiar with that goes on in middle school. Next up for young adults is Enlightened. It's a graphic novel telling of the um, life and times of Siddhartha, um, the founder of Buddhism, and set in Nepal. It's got 300 pages, full color throughout. It provides teens and other kids like me an informative look at the uh, life and times of uh, uh, Siddhartha and the beginning of Buddhism. So I think that'll be really appealing to um, some of your patrons interested in learning about Buddhist philosophy and Siddhartha. Great illustrations. Next up is Duel. Uh, Jessica Bagley with her um, um, husband, the illustrator Aaron, um, graphic novel, fictional telling of a sisterly rivalry, and uh, becomes so um, uh, bound up in the rivalry that it ends up in a um, in a duel <laughs> with swordplay on guard. Um, it comes out also in hardcover at the same time, eleven seven. Simon Schuster books for young readers, dual. Take a look at that. And next up is Made for It, Jamie Sumner. Um, it's for older middle graders and young young adults. 
Um, I've loved all of Jamie's books, Time to Roll, One Kid's Trash, Summer for June, all of which includes characters the kids can really um, relate to. Uh, Jamie just has this knack for storytelling and for um, making you friends with the characters that she has. She's full of heart, um, and I think kids will love Jamie Sumner. Please take a look at it. In this story, a uh, teenager, teenager, Franny, is determined to keep mom from her le- relapse into drugs. Um, and and just like many of Jamie's stories, it's told with heart, honesty, and in, it has themes that are, are important to kids today. Um, last but not least is Chloe Gong for young adults. Foul Heart Huntsman is the sequel to um, Foul Lady Fortune. It's set in 1930s China. Um, and much like um, Chloe's other books, it's a nod to Shakespeare. It's got action, adventure, suspense, drama, danger, um, tons of atmosphere. Comes out 926. Kids will be looking for it. Chloe Gong, New York Times bestselling author. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I'm going to say thank you very much for um, taking part of this presentation today. Um, And um, just want to say any of these books are available at at your local library. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at tim.hap at simonandschuster.com. Um, Thank you very much, and hopefully we'll see you soon.